Howdy friends, I hope you're doing really well. My name is August, this is Cozy Rosie Reads, and today we're deciding my January TBR using my dwindling TBR jar. <laughs> I think we only have like one and a half rounds left in here. If you're new here, I pick 10 prompts. These help me decide my TBR because of my overflowing TBR shelves that I have going on right now. So we're gonna figure out what I'm gonna be reading. This is my favorite video to film. I say it every single time, but it just like gets me so excited. I love the challenges, the prompts, using my brain, figuring out what books will fit the current mood. I love winter books, I love winter literature, I love reading in winter, and I'm taking January off this year of photography work. I'll just be working on some like back-end business stuff, but not booking new shoots. So I'll have so much more time to read and create content, and I'm really, really excited. Let me move some knickknacks, actually. I am overflowing with books right now. Actually, this deck can go away as well. <laughs> there we go. These are the books that I have on my TBR shelf. <laughs> so many. But yeah, let's go ahead and get started with the first prompt. As I'm filming this, it is December 31st, so I'm definitely excited for the new year. I'm actually feeling hopeful and optimistic for the new year, for my personal self, for my business, for booktube, all the literature I get to read that I have not yet discovered. I'm feeling feeling really good about it. I hope you are too. Um, if this is published later, happy 2022. I hope you had a wonderful new year. All right, first prompt is, ooh, this is fun, mystery. I love reading like mystery books in winter, like mystery, thriller, horror in winter. It just hits different. Now let's see, what kind of mystery books? Oh, I know, I know what I'm gonna pick. Okay, I probably have some more options, but what is hitting me right now is in My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. I think this might be more of a thriller, but it is like a psychological mystery thriller. We have some unreliable characters and narrators. Uh, if I understand it correctly, it is like a reunion of students who were at a university, very elitist, dark academia, and something has happened. Is there a murder? Oh yeah. Heather, one of the girls from campus and from their university friend group, died and these friends reunite not really sure who killed heather or what happened with that it might be a suspicious death this is gonna be such a fun mystery so both my partner and i actually picked up this book together there was like a deal going on at target for new hardcovers and if you buy two you get one for free so this is the one that we picked for free and i'm really excited i've heard really wonderful things about this i'm really excited for this one. Oh my gosh that was a really easy pick i feel like it's gonna be so good it is an addictive and riveting psychological thriller but there are mystery elements because we're trying to figure out who actually did it can we believe our narrators or our characters i've heard that the characters in this are just so wildly dynamic and icky <laughs> i'm ready for that that just sounds like the perfect kind of winter read and i'm really excited this is actually a 2021 release i hardly read like beautiful new books so i'm really excited for this one prompt number two that was honestly such an easy one <gasps> a book you think will make you cry well <laughs> so you might all know if you've been here for a bit that i did not get to a little life in 2021 it was kind of a smaller goal of mine to read it. It was picked for one of my TBR jars, but I never got to it. I feel like this could make me cry. I'm just very curious. This is a heavy, dense book that a lot of people will say breaks their hearts and makes them cry, but I just don't know if it'll make me cry. So that's an option. What else do we have that I think might make me cry? I think that uh, The Guest Cat by Takashi Harati will probably make me cry. It's about cats. I have cats, any, and I don't know. The very end of this review that's blurbed on the back says, uh, ultimately this book is about what it means to love and to lose. Uh, animal deaths, specifically cat deaths, mm, I will never be okay with it, but this does seem really adorable. It is about these two writers, a young couple who enjoy their quiet cottage in a leafy part of Tokyo. A cat invites herself into their small kitchen. She is beautiful. She leaves but comes again and then again and again. This one's a really high option. I feel like I could love it. I honestly really love like books that have cats in them. I don't know, cat books or cat literature. It just hits different, you know? It's just a little sad when you have your own cats. This one could be beautiful. It also could literally break me. I honestly feel like the guest cat would break my heart a little bit more than a little life. If you keep hearing my arms cracking, I'm sorry. I don't know why everything, every bone in my body is like cracking and creaking right now. 
this is a really big option and it's small so i know i could get to it but it might it might break me <laughs> a little bit what else do we have friends that i think might make me sad yeah you know i'm not really seeing anything else that like i've picked up in with the intention of i think i'm gonna cry so i'm gonna go with the guest cat by takashi harati Sounds cute and quaint, but it could break my heart if there is the loss of a cat. Or even if the cat goes missing or just doesn't come back, like that's gonna break my heart. So I'm gonna go with this one, this cute little copy. Prompt number three. Ooh, okay, we have just the letter B. B as in boy. Ooh, okay, so I have a lot of B books. Let's pull them all out. Beloved by Toni Morrison. Beautiful Animals by Lawrence Osborne. The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Wow. No, that's it. That's all I have for B. So out of these, I think I really want to read Bride's Head Revisited. I honestly don't really know what it's about. I think I talked about how I didn't know what it was about in my most recent book haul. I did find this used and it's such a, I just love this copy and this cover and this art and the texture. Definitely gonna be adding this. If I remember from maybe somebody else talking about it, I believe it's like academia, friendships, hints of male male romance, aristocracy. I'm just not 100% sure. This copy smells good, it's very old weathered pages so i'm gonna add bride's head revisited i'm really excited <laughs> ever since i picked this up i'm like i just can't wait to read it every time i see it on my shelf with this beautiful spine i've been like i can't wait to read this so let's add it for january prompt number four book set in the wilderness <gasps> oh that is fun i already have a few coming to mind um that i haven't shared with you all because they were kind of one was a Christmas gift, and then the other was I found in a little free library right before Christmas. So first I'm thinking of Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. My parents gifted me this copy for Christmas. It is so cute. It's like a really tall, like almost indie publisher paperback. Like look at the spacing in that font. I love books in this kind of format. It's very unique, and it's very similar to the other one I have, which is also a classic which is Call of the Wild by Jack London. I've never seen a book in this kind of format before. So when you open it, it's kind of like Bible text. <laughs> so I imagine like you have to like read it like this. I read Call of the Wild when I was in like middle school or high school and I really liked it. I actually had this really cool, um, do you all remember maybe like early 2000s, there, it was really popular to have those books that kind of had like, it was a hardcover, but they were a little squishy. I had one of Black Beauty and Call of the Wild. I remember reading Call of the Wild and thinking it would be like this really cool adventure story, but then it was like really sad and I was not okay with it. But now that I'm older, like both of, oh, how cool are these copies? I really, oh, I would take this format over a hardcover any day. Um, so these are two options set in the wilderness. Uh, this kind of follows like anthropomorphic animals and like fancy tweed jackets and stuff. I've never read Wind in the Willows. I've always wanted to though. Call of the Wild, if you don't know, it's about a man who is on a dog sled and things happen. <laughs> That's all I'll say. What else do I have that takes place in wilderness? Um, I'm just thinking of all my like animal books. I have Watership Down by Richard Adams. This is another book that I really, really want to read, but I'm kind of envisioning reading this in the spring or summer, especially with this beautiful cover. So this is gonna be a no for now. I'm sure I have more, but I just can't think of what else would be super wildernessy. I have The People in the Trees by Hanya Yanagihara down here. I'm not gonna pull it out though. That one's really intimidating to me. That's more intimidating than A Little Life. Like it's, it's a massive book seems very scholarly and intelligent and dense and not ready for it. Honestly, I think I might actually go for a reread since I haven't read Call of the Wild in so long and it's icy, it's a tundra, like this is just really pulling to me and I feel like I could finish it pretty quickly. It's been so long since I've read it. Wow. It was originally serialized in 1903. I didn't even know it was that old. I'm gonna add this. This sounds like a perfect January cold day. Just like stay in, read this weird version and copy. I found this in a little free library actually um, and annotate it. I'm excited to read a classic again. 
It's been so long. Let's, let's head Call of the Wild. I'm really liking this stack right now. Like these are books that I've just been really genuinely looking forward to reading. This is so exciting. I, I honestly love watching my preferences and tastes throughout the seasons of doing these TBR challenges. When I, and I will continue to do this like I think forever. It's such an easy and perfect way for me to figure out what I'm gonna be reading each month. But like come spring and summer, I definitely want light, fruity kind of books. I want books that are just like really poetic and airy and light and usually with like pastel book covers. And then winter, I definitely want a little bit more dense, darker um, topics. I just love seeing that change in my own preferences and tastes when I'm picking these books. Because a lot of these books I'm looking at and I'm like, oh yeah, that's just too much of a summer book for me to even want to think about, you know? Anyway, I just love seeing that and and I, I hope I hope I'm not alone in that feeling of being very selective of the books we read in each season. So prompt number five, contemporary, contemporary. Okay, I have a few. So contemporary in my mind, at least, and this might not be like the Merriam Webster's definition, but I think of books that are more popular, more almost like book club kind of books, like not literary fiction, but just a little bit more popular more people have heard of them. I just think of book club books, honestly. That's like the biggest thing I think about and the difference between like contemporary and literary fiction. So for that, I do have quite a few actually. Oh, but I'm not sure. I just like don't really want to read them. I'll pull out like what I have and what I'm thinking. So I have The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis, Interview with the Vampire Anne Rice, R.I.P. Anne Rice, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This is actually my partner's copy. My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell, Olive Kitteridge by Elizabeth Strout. I feel like In a Dark, Dark Wood by Ruth Ware would count for contemporary too. Lastly, I think this one might count too, but I'm just not sure how popular this is. It's Vita Nostra by Marina and Sergei Diachenko. I'm most compelled to read this one because it is translated from Russian and I have had really, really good success with reading contemporary or literary fiction Russian translated books. So I'm leaning towards this one, but I don't fully know if it's actually contemporary or if it's literary fiction, but it does seem like it's more plot driven, character driven action rather than like the quiet, dark literary fiction. So I'm gonna add Vita Nostra actually. A lot of these books sound really good right now but this is pulling me the most just because I tend to read a lot of like Russian translated literature or just like any kind of translated work I feel like in winter and this just seems really fun. It's really big. It seems like it could be an adventure and really strange and bizarre. This follows a young woman I believe. Sasha, yes, and she meets this mysterious person and then she ends up going to this very weird university. I get a little bit of like Catherine House vibes, but like it's like for very intelligent students, but no one wants to be there and no one understands why they're there. Like it's just very vague and shrouded in mystery and it sounds really interesting. Um, I think somebody compared it to like Alice in Wonderland meets um, Harry Potter. I might have made that up. Yeah, dark Harry Potter on steroids with a hefty dose of metaphysics, which could be my jam. I like anything meta, like metaphysical, metaphorical, yeah, all of that. I think I'm definitely gonna pick this one. And if I get to it, I'll be so, so happy because I do want to read this. It looks like originally it was published in 2013, so it's not even really like a new contemporary. I don't know. Let me all know, friends. If I, if I chose correctly, if you would classify this as contemporary, if you've read it, if you enjoyed it, no spoilers, but I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, I do think this cover is pretty rad like a painting, hyper-realistic painting. So let's go ahead and add this to the pile. I'm gonna be lazy and I'm not gonna put these books away yet. I'm just gonna <laughs> leave them right there. Prompt number six. Oh, Alec picks a book. That's my partner. Okay, well I guess I'll have to wait until he's home from work and I'll have him pick a book for me. So don't let me forget, there will be more content later at the end of this video of Alec picking a book for me. I'm really excited to see what he picks. Who knows? <laughs> okay, prompt number seven. In <laughs> oh, yes. Intimidating book. Intimidating book. Well, we know what book I probably won't read in January. Can I just be honest? If there's an intimidating book, I probably won't read it. <laughs> I will prioritize it last in my DBR. 
Um, I have a lot of books on here that intimidate me. And I already have some like pretty big books on here. So let's maybe find like a smaller book, a shorter book that's still intimidating. It doesn't need to be intimidating by its girthiness. <laughs> Honestly, Toni Morrison has been really intimidating me lately, which is wild because I read Tar Baby by her a while ago and I really loved it. It's so, like I shouldn't be intimidated. People absolutely love both The Bluest Eye and Beloved but it freaks me out for some reason. Like I just get so intimidated by it. So I think I have to go with that because they are pretty short. Let's read like the first little page and see which one pulls most to me. The bluest eye. Here is the house. It is green and white. It has a red door. It is very pretty. Here is the family. Mother, father, Dick and Jane live in the green and white house. They are very happy. We have Beloved. I honestly don't know the plots of either of these and I'm kind of keeping it that way. 124 was spiteful, full of a baby's venom. The women in the house knew it and so did the children. For years each put up with the spite in his own way, but by 1873 Seth and her daughter Denver were its only victims. Ooh, should I give Beloved a go? I think so. This sounds really interesting. I need to read more Toni Morrison. I loved the one book so far that I've read by her. So good. I just need to read more. Let's add Beloved. I don't know why it intimidates me because I really like her writing style, but for some reason it's intimidating. So, okay. Maybe it's because these are more classics. Let's add that there. Prompt number eight. We're nearing the end already. Prettiest cover. Okay. I have so many beautiful covers. I have so many beautiful covers, friends. How am I to pick? Let me show you some of my, my favorites recently that I that could be options really like follow me to ground by Sue Rainsford I heard I think it was Gabby Reed's talking about this book and how it actually surprised her because it is slightly fantasy but not fully and she was talking about how much it surprised her and how much she liked it and it's very small I think it's a beautiful cover I love it so that's an option Hello, stinky. You look stinky. Um, this has to be one of my, I'm just making a mess here. Oh my god. This has to be one of my favorite covers of all time. Hollow by B. Catling. So creepy, so eerie. This is like a very bizarre, surreal fantasy, dark book. I honestly don't even know the plot really. Um, I think this might be on top of all the other like kind of dark books I have. This might be a little too dark. I want to read this with like pretty fresh mind interspersed with like some lighter literature because I feel like this is gonna be dark and dense and weird surreal and beautiful which is 100% my vibe but I just don't think I'm emotionally there for January based on the books I already have Let's see what else beautiful cover I have a lot of beautiful covers but some of these I do want to save for summer and spring so I'm not gonna pull them out other beautiful covers. I have a lot of beautiful ones, but not like my most favorite ever. So I actually think I'm gonna go with Follow Me to Ground. We're reading a lot of hard covers this month. Uh, these three, Vita Nostra, In My Dreams, and Follow Me to Ground, I got around like the same exact time and they're all like really dark hard covers. <laughs> like, maybe that's just January is gonna be kind of hardcover month. I'm excited for this one. So let me tell you all a little bit about what it follows. It's about this woman named Ada and her father, and they live on the edge of this village where they can help sick locals by cracking open their damaged bodies or temporarily burying them in the reviving dangerous ground nearby. But then Ada falls in love with somebody and is questioning her like role in life. If she's really, she doesn't like curing people. She'd much rather be with Samson, but it's like fighting tradition this push-pull dynamic. Um, I'm excited for this one. I do think this cover is so stunning though. Closer look. It's beautiful. Prompt number nine. What do we have? Ooh, red cover. Red cover. The Assignation by Joyce Carol Oates. Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi. Satrapi? Yeah, Satrapi. Then I have You Were Made For This by Michelle Sachs. Um, I'm gonna make it easy for myself this month. I do want to read all of these, but I'm gonna make it easy and we're gonna do a graphic novel, which is <laughs> Persepolis, the story of a childhood. I watched this film in one of my honors English classes, I believe, in high school. So this is actually a memoir and it says it's funny and heartbreaking 
It's about Marjane growing up in Iran during the Islamic Revolution, and it's in comic strips. So she talks about like growing up as a child in this like very complicated, dynamic, potentially violent uh, world. So I'm gonna add this to my TBR. Very looking forward to actually reading it because I have seen the film, which is also animated in this style and illustrated. So I remember a little bit about it actually, but it's been a long time. So I'm really excited for this one. And the last prompt before we have to wait for Alec to get home, prompt number 10. Wow, these were really good prompts this month. I don't know if it's the, oh, the letter X. <laughs> I think I just had to include it because I included every letter of the alphabet, but I don't have anything with with X. Let's try again. Oh wow, yeah, we are down to the last nuggets. We only have three nuggets left. E. <laughs> we get all the hard letters. E. So I have to find a book with the first title of E. I don't think I have anything. Yeah, nope. I only have two left. We only have two left. Please let one of these work. Okay. Ooh, two word title. I like that one. Oh, these are such fun prompts this time. Cat's Cradle, Kurt Vonnegut. Olive Kitterich is out here too. Ninth House. Wow, I actually have quite a few. I have The Accursed by Joyce Carol Oates. Like I mentioned before, Beautiful Animals by Lawrence Osborne. Galatea 2.2. Human Acts by Han Kang. Mr. Fox by Helen Oyeyemi. Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Oh gosh, I can't even see. One Day by David Nichols. Sour Heart by Jenny Zhang. Stern Men, Elizabeth Gilbert. Supper Club by Laura Williams. Ooh, okay, I actually know what I'm gonna pick because this one has a little bit of a story. I'm gonna pick Tin Man by Sarah Winman because my partner got a copy of this recently. He didn't know that I had it and he just thought it sounded really interesting. And so he suggested that we read it together and have our own little book club. So I'm gonna suggest we do that in January because we wanted to do it this past month in December but he was finishing reading Afterland by Lauren Bukes. I have not read Afterland, but I have loved almost every single book. Well, I guess I've only read two books from Lauren Bukes backlist. So um, The Shining Girls and the other one, I can't remember the name of. Anyway, so he finished that. So I think I might suggest this month for him and I to read Tin Man since we, all, we both have our own copies right now. So this says this is almost a love story, but it's not as simple. So it starts off with these two 12 year old boys, Ellis and Michael, and they first become friends living around Oxford. They teach themselves to swim, discovering poetry blah 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 what happened in the years between their separation it's a heartbreaking novel celebrating love in all its forms and all the little moments and small kindnesses that make up life um i've heard that this is very good i've heard that this is actually quite a few different booktubers favorite books um either of like a year that they've read it or of all time so i'm really excited i think this cover is so beautiful look at that gold foil on there i found this one at dollar tree friends for one dollar so i'm really excited i think my partner and i will enjoy it it is blurbed by matt haig on the cover which says breaks your heart and warms it all at once so i don't know if this truly is a friendship about two men or if it is a male male romance kind of similar to Bride's Head Revisited I guess like I'm just not sure if it is all platonic but we'll see either way it's about human connection and friendship and stuff so I am excited so so far this is the stack and now we just have to wait for my partner to get home so I will let you all know then what he picks okay so yeah from here to there this book to that book this book all the way to here and then i also have these down here that one was on my tbr for like july or august i think yeah. i didn't get to it okay you're gonna pick your house <laughs> that's yours oh I totally forgot I bought this for myself. You did? <laughs> uh, my TBR is The Night House. <laughs> and your TBR. I still want to read it, but I said I wanted to read it after you. Yeah, and that's good. So, 
I'll read that next. Your TBR. Who's gonna be hollow? <gasps> I was debating doing that one. Well, I like the text, I like the font. Ooh, I remember when you picked this out. Yeah. It's like Salvador Dali. Mm hmm. You bought it for and me. That it. <gasps> oh, I'm so excited. Thank you, good sir. <laughs> Thank you all so incredibly much for being here. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had a wonderful new year. Cheers to 2022 friends. We're doing it, we've done it. I hope you have a great start to 2022 and I can't wait to talk more about all the books that we're gonna be reading and all the wonderful things that we pick up and I will see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye.